this is Jackie with All Access, and I'm here with Siler at uh, Empire in Virginia, and we're here for the All Stars Tour, guys. Um, you guys are from New York City. How does growing up there kind of uh, influence your sound? Uh, it honestly influences everything. Uh, I don't know. We're just, we all grew up, like, just near hip-hop from the get-go, so that's a big thing in our music. We're very influenced by that, and just the fact that we're around so many different things and people because you know it's so multicultural it definitely I don't know it definitely shapes our music and who we are as people yeah and I mean a lot of the stuff we write about is from the experience as the experiences that we got from living in New York so that definitely plays a pays a toll in like everything that we write about and how we play and how we act how we speak and all that to be honest no thick accents either so you know that's a plus <laughs> I think I it's mean, uh, yeah I don't I never thought I had an accent but people have like pointed it out and I really don't understand it but it's, it's been normal my whole life till I started touring, yeah. to be sure. honest. So how did Siler come to be added to the All-Stars Tour roster? Actually, luckily, luckily enough, it was super last minute, which is sweet that we're on it, but <laughs> our manager called us and they, uh, he was just like, hey, if I told you you guys have to go on the All-Stars Tour tomorrow, like, are you guys down? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> and, I was just, and I was just like, uh, yes, we're down. I mean, we had to miss Texas, but... That's just because uh, he, he he called us later and then confirmed that we were on it. And we were just like, all right, let's do it. But we had to get like two days to actually get everything together. But we started in Tampa, and it's been a fucking awesome experience so far. So we're still to be on it. It was a crazy opportunity. I mean, uh, we feel for structures, so our fucking shout-outs to them. Cause, yeah, matter, cause, matter of respect to structures. Uh, it's, so, it's, a, that was really cool. it's a shitty situation. If we were in it, I would completely understand how they feel, so our... I feel for them, but we're stoked. It's definitely a blessing. And I hope that uh, All Stars isn't jinxed with I See Stars being stuck in Florida. Don't worry, this won't air until after the show, so we're not, uh, I, I know about it before you do. Mm. Um, <laughs> how did, the cameras, it, yeah, you gotta love that iPod, iPad rather. Uh, so how do you guys make sure that you stand out for all these fans here at All Stars? Well, I think the fact that uh, I think the fact that we came in so late—well, not even late, just so last minute to begin with—I think uh, it's really catching a lot of people by surprise because they didn't expect to see us on this lineup. But uh, we try to send out a lot with our music, our sound to begin with, our new record, and uh, we're very big on fashion, the way we dress and stuff. And just like you said before, it's—I think it's almost like a natural thing the way the way we speak, the way we act. It's it all has to do with, with uh, where we're from. Yeah, so. like where we grew up is, I mean, the way we dress, the way we talk, like he said, it's all based around growing up in New York and seeing everybody doing the same thing. It's just, it's almost like inevitable to act and write the music that we write and dress the way we do. It's just what we're around all the time. Yeah. Makes you want to be different, right? And it, we definitely do stand out because there's not a lot of bands, well, no, I don't want to say that because someone's definitely going to say some shit to that, but... <laughs> From New York, I mean, I can't name that many bands that I would say in our demographic are out there doing what we're doing. So it's definitely awesome to be one of them. One of them. Absolutely. One of the few. And you guys mentioned uh, the way you dress. Uh, band merch is one way that bands can sort of stand apart. Who creates your band merch? Who designs it? Actually, it's funny. Both, both of us. Was, uh, <laughs> we're not, you know, we're not like Photoshop freaks, but basically we have the ideas and then we sit with a uh, buddy back home or just anyone who's really just fluent with Photoshop and uh, yeah we have the ideas and we just kind of sit there and just like go over the design look at it and just like take a few days to finalize it but it's mostly him and I who sit there and just come up with the ideas what sort of uh, what sort of things inspire those ideas uh the brands we like, like yeah what I wear what he wears what we wish we could afford to wear straight like up. Straight, yeah. straight up yeah, like yeah, the yeah. brands that we look up to and that we like to wear and that's it if you can't afford it, make it. That, that makes sense. Um, so you released To Whom It May Concern on Razor and Tie this year. Um, who or what influenced the writing process for that? Well, first and foremost, uh, bands from where, I don't know, the bands we listened to when we were very young, like Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, Korn, Deftones, Slipknot, just basically the whole new, new metal era, but, uh, and also albums like Sempaterno. We were actually just talking about it with someone else. Uh, that album was like insane. Sick. Yeah. Sick. 
That album was totally actually insane, like insanely uh, influential to me uh, for the writing process, lyrics, all that stuff. But just for the music in general, we all love the album. Uh, when we went into the studio, we were actually just listening to hip hop the whole time. But uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Just the new metal bands and uh, Semper Turno at the moment, at at the time. It was in 2013 of September when we finished it. Yeah. And uh, what are the benefits of being on a on an indie label like Razor and Tie? Uh, what label? Indie label. On an indie label? Well, they're they're, they're not like Warner no, Brothers. No, they are an indie yeah. label. They're not major, but it's awesome because the team that we work with at Razor and Tie are the coolest people, the most driven people to work with us. And I mean. Oh, shout out to Dylan. Yeah. Dylan is our Dylan's our A and R over there, and he's one of the coolest dudes. He's so good to us, and everyone that works personally with us, and we've met them all, well, most of them, and it's awesome working with it's them. Just, it's just honestly great to know that there's a team of people out there that have faith in what you do and in your band, your music, you know, and that's that's what we have at Razor Inside. That's what they've been able to give us, just like the support the faith and we just know we have someone to back us when we're out and, here and, and even awesome. outside the label with our management sean keith from samarian and our booking agent who was amanda fior from pantheon agency who held us down and she was awesome and we just moved uh she had her own things and now we're on a another agency called icm and we're with nick storch and he's we've barely worked with him yet and already the the progression is there like the ideas are flowing, and he's taking care of us really well. So. I was going to say, look where you are right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're here on All Stars. It's, uh, it's unreal. Yeah. So speaking of music, you guys, uh, your album is available to stream on YouTube. Yes. What are the benefits of doing something like that? Well, you know, a lot of times, not, you know, not everyone has money. That's, that's one. Two, I mean, I don't think it's uh, fair a lot of times that you got to pay for your music. And, I mean, it sounds kind of weird because I'm a musician and, you know, you want to make money off of that. But the reason why we have it streaming on YouTube is because I feel like people deserve a, a chance to listen to what they're going to purchase. If they want to purchase it, if they can't purchase it, like, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what we want to see is kids at these shows, you know, kids, like the kids that yeah. really just support and read like a band. And uh, our album actually leaked a month like exactly a month before it was supposed to come out. So when that happened, we were just like, all right, these kids are going to start downloading it anyway. So why don't we be the bigger men and then just give it to them? Because first of all, the one that leaked wasn't even like the full quality one. So we were like, okay, we talked with the label and then we just threw it up on our YouTube page. We put every track, the like the high HD versions, whatever. And I mean, that's what they deserve to get to hear instead of, they're going to download it anyway. No one, I mean... When you're given music that you want to listen to and it's free, you're going to download it. So there was no better way to go about it than just give them what they deserve. So. They're going to find a way anyway. <laughs> uh, the video for your song, Prescription Meditation, uh, at least watching you perform it, uh, seems very cathartic. Um, is singing for you cathartic always? Or tell me a little bit about that music video. Well, that uh, the song in general has a really deep uh, meaning behind it. And it was just... That song just sounds, <coughs> excuse me, just sounds very, I don't know, at the time when I was doing the song and the lyrics itself, it was just such a, you could, I don't know, I feel like you could actually hear how desperate I sounded, and that's like, I don't know, that's a climax of our record, I feel, like, just prescription, the desperation, and just the whole vibe of the song, and I was, I was just really glad that we were able to, like, actually translate that into a visual and just give it out there, because that's, that's what I saw in the song, and I don't know, it worked out perfectly, so. Between between your performance and the director, I think you were definitely able to get that across, so yeah. that was good. Oh, it was Gollin. Real, Brad Gollin. Yeah. Awesome dude. Killed it on the video. Well, uh, what are uh, what's up next for you guys after All Stars? Uh, well, on the way back home, we have two weeks with uh, Betraying the Martyrs. They're from France. They're our boys already. We've been on this tour for like three days, and they're like, everyone on the tour has been awesome so far, but yeah, uh, we have around with them then we'll be home for just a little bit and then we have a sweet tour that we can't announce just yet but it's gonna make a lot of our fans happy for yeah. sure that's a guarantee so it's, it's with a, a band that we've been request i think it's the most requested band that we've been asked to tour with so i'm hoping everyone's happy with it and it's a full u.s so hopefully we hit all the cities that complain that we don't get to see them yeah it's yeah. Asked, like we don't make our own we shows a lot of times you know all the time it's not our fault actually so I think a lot of people are going to be happy with that announcement, but we can't make that just yet. And just uh, trying to get overseas, I guess, after that, that's in the future.
Well, stay tuned for much more from Siler. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and in the Key of Change.